Surely by now you've heard of the Supreme Court's decision to protect LGBTQ employees from discrimination based on their sexual orientation in the decision that they issued very recently. I'm not really interested in that decision as much as I'm interested in the Supreme Court's repeated failure to hear cases about qualified immunity. Let's talk about it. Hey, what's up, guys? Welcome to Law Explaining the Interwebs. I'm your host, Nick Ricada of Ricada Law, a small law firm in central Minnesota. And today we're going to talk very briefly about qualified immunity. Why brief, you ask? Because talking about it for a long time makes my blood boil a little bit and it gets my heart rate too high. So we're not going to we're not going to do that. And I'm going to focus on qualified immunity from the Supreme Court's perspective based on a case that was denied to be heard back in May of uh, May of 2020, May 18th specifically. Now, this came up today because uh, a, a another qualified immunity case was declined just yesterday on Monday, June 15th. But that's uh, that's kind of a complicated case. And I think this one from May 18th is a little more straightforward. So real quick, what is qualified immunity? Qualified immunity in summary, is a doctrine that started in 1982. This is not from the Constitution. This was created. It's a legal fiction created by the Supreme Court in 1982 that shields officers, police officers, and uh, and public officials from liability for acts that are not clearly established violations of constitutional rights. It shields them basically from civil liability for causing harm to someone like you and me, as long as those acts aren't obviously violations of, of our rights. And But that obvious violation uh, has a pretty specific meaning, and it means that it has to be clearly established in existing case law using cases that have very similar fact patterns. It's a very, very restrictive uh, doc doctrine on us, and it pu puts a really high bar on a civilian to go ahead and challenge the authority that caused them harm. And I'm going to illustrate that in this case pretty quickly. The Supreme Court won't hear a case that shields cops accused of stealing over $225,000. So uh, I've got another summary of uh, of of the uh, qualified immunity right below me. Cops can legally cause you harm and steal your stuff according to the Supreme Court. That's it. That's the best summary of it. But in this case, cops are accused of stealing, not seizing, right? If they seize something pursuant to a search warrant and put it on an, uh, on an inventory log and put it in an evidence locker, that's a seizure. We're talking about stealing as in taking for their own personal gain and benefit. Now, the facts of this case are pretty, pretty weird, and I'm going to summarize them as best as I can because I don't want this to be a long video. Two businessmen were under investigation by the police and uh, for an illegal gambling ring. So a search warrant was obtained to search the premises for evidence of this unlawful gambling. In the process of that search, $275,000 are alleged to be taken. Two businessmen said these guys took a total of $275,000 split between uh, cash and a rare coin collection. All right. Now, what the police reported on the seizure ticket was $50,000 taken, and they turned in that $50,000. But what happened to the other $225,000? Allegedly, the three police officers just kept it. Now, what and what is the ultimate result of this? We never get to know. There was no, there was no criminal charge to the three police officers, and there were no civil lawsuits that were able to be brought against those three police officers. Oh, an important point, just because. I, I know how that how this story started, and I want to clarify something. The two businessmen who were under investigation were not charged with any crime. So the money was taken from them, and they were never charged with a crime. That should bother you. 
right? Like if there was a criminal act, then surely you would charge them with a crime and then they would get to determine if that property was the product of that criminal act. But that's not what happened here. They just lost their stuff. And the police officers uh, were similarly not charged with any crime. But then when they went after the city for taking $225,000 of their stuff, the officers were granted what's called qualified immunity. And there's a sentence from the California, the Ninth Circuit Court of Appeals, uh, the Ninth Circuit Court of Appeals, which really illustrates just how insane uh, this, this doctrine is. So here's what we're going to be reading. All right. We recognize that the allegation of any theft by police officers, most certainly the theft of over $225,000, is deeply disturbing. Yes, they stole what in most places in the United States uh, would be the value of a home, a, a relatively nice middle class home. $225,000. They stole a house worth of value. Uh, it is deeply disturbing. Whether that conduct violates the Fourth Amendment's prohibition on unreasonable searches and seizures, however, would not, quote, be clear to a reasonable officer. That's right, folks. The Ninth Circuit Court of Appeals says it's not clear to a reasonable officer whether stealing a house worth of value <laughs> would clearly violate the Fourth Amendment's prohibition of state actors unreasonably seizing your property. Now, he should have added some words, the justice should have added some words into this, saying that without criminal charges, because again, no criminal charges against these guys. There's no criminal act. They are innocent of any crime. The only thing they're guilty of was being suspected of being criminals but they never rose to the level of probable cause to issue a charge. So they're, they're innocent. That's it. They, there's no other way about it until they're charged with a crime. And since this was back in 2013, they won't be. They're outside of any statute of limitations at this point. They're innocent. So the Ninth Circuit has determined that police officers cannot reasonably determine whether stealing $225,000 of your stuff for their personal gain is actually a violation of your constitutional rights. That's the best summary of qualified immunity that I can give you. It's disgusting. It needs to end. I hope you learned something. Hope your blood is steaming. I know mine is. I'm going to go chill out. Hope you guys have a good day. We'll do a longer thing on qualified immunity at some point in the future. Uh, so please subscribe to Ricada Law if you want to see stuff like that and more content like this. Hope you have a nice one. Peace. Peace.